Our next guest is using fashion to fight poverty in Africa. Here to discuss her new clothing line is renowned performance artist and founder of African Silk. I love that name. I African, know, Silk, African Silk. Ed O'Hart. Ed O'Hart, welcome to the show. Oh, welcome. thank you so much. You Lola. look gorgeous. Yes. Thank you. So thank you. This I tried. It's called a gale. <laughs> on yeah, gale. A gale. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Is this part of your line? It won't be part of my line, but actually, it's a great question because uh, the fabric that I'm wearing is traditional mm -hmm. African fabric. So this is not stuff that you would find walking around some shops in New York or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something that I will down the line incorporate. All right. All right. Well, speaking of your line, your line is dedicated to preserving and encouraging local African textile yes. traditions. Yes. So what's what's going on in the African textile right now? A mess. Just, uh, well, just, just, just a, why is a it a mess? mess? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, um, so when we think about Africa, we mm -hmm. think about African print, right. and we're just sort of like, yes, the, the colorful, you know, shapes and designs mm -hmm. and so on going on. But the fact of the matter is that African print is not actually made by Africans. Really? The majority, the majority of African print is coming from China. It's coming from India. Even the laces, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys know, of course, you yes. know a lot about some traditional, you know, especially like West African dress, like women love to wear laces and stuff. That's made in like Switzerland. Mm -hmm. wow. You know, so it's just sort of like this identity that's supposed to be African doesn't actually mm -hmm. even really belong well, to Africans, you know? Why aren't more of the textiles actually made on the continent? Well, I think it's like a matter of uh, sort of like manufacturing costs mm. and reach also. You know, while kind of doing some of the numbers of trying to get this thing going, mm -hmm. I realized that it would just be so much simpler for me to just buy fabric from mm. China. Really? I mean, it really is a, is a cost issue. And you know, it's a logistical supply chain kind of issue also. Like by the time I've, you know, had some, some you know, textile artisan in Africa make something and then, you know, ship it back to me. And you know, it's just, it's complicated. You know, the roads aren't there. The, a lot of the infrastructure isn't there. So um, it's kind of like a cost, a cost issue, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. But why did you decide to take on this cause in particular? Right. Well, um, I'm African, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's just incredibly important to me that, you know, the continent as a whole just rise in stature and, you know, in, um, in the sort of respect and, you know, economic standing, all this stuff. Um, but also, I guess I've always kind of made or collaborated with other people to, to make costumes for when I perform and stuff, because mm -hmm. I'm a performer. Um, and I've always wanted to make my own line. I have just tons of ideas in my head, <laughs> you know, um, that kind of come from, you know, the culture, like being back home and just mm -hmm. seeing the things people wear. But, um, you know, was, I also like to paint and draw and make mm -hmm. sculpture, it's just more stuff to make. Okay. Uh, and to help make your line a reality, you've actually started a Kickstarter campaign I to did. raise $5,000. Tell I us did. more. I did. Um, so it's not a ton of money, technically, for mm -hmm. starting a new line. I'm, I want to start small, because okay. my thing is that I like to make sure something's going to work right. before mm -hmm. I go full out. Mm -hmm. So I really want to test out the market and see that people want this, <clears throat> see that the supply chain works and everything. Um, I launched a Kickstarter because I didn't want to go the traditional route of getting a loan from a bank or, you know, looking for investors to kind of take a cut of, right. you know, what it is, just speaking very honestly, mm -hmm. of what it is I'm trying to build. Um, and I also wanted to kind of generate excitement and, you know, let people know, hey, I'm doing this. And, and I have thought, the people feel invested. And have mm -hmm. the people actually feel invested mm -hmm. and say, you know, I helped you her with so this. Far? Um, so I have so far raised a little over four grand. Oh, wow. Oh, that's yeah. great. So, so, close. so I'm yeah. close, but there's only like, you know, oh, it's still like 80%, 80 something percent. Mm. And there's, you know, a week left. So I'm really hoping I can get the word out more and get people more excited about and where can um, we go to actually help donate? Um, so you can go to kickstarter.com mm -hmm. and search for African Silk. That's easy. African yeah. Silk. Okay. African Silk. Yeah, <laughs> kickstarter.com. So the Gaylays are not in the current line, but what can we expect oh. in the immediate? Well, in the immediate line, mm -hmm. what you can expect is some very sexy and luxurious lingerie. Okay, oh. so this is this is kind of the other thing that's going on. African print lingerie. Yeah. 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 I got to tell you about the other thing that's going on. The other thing that's going on is that it's impossible to find African print in um, anything that's not cotton. Okay. It's generally only in cotton. You know, mm. and I wanted some in, in some soft, luxurious um, fabric and couldn't find it. So it's like I, I have to make it myself. Mm, and okay. so that's kind of the other thing that's going on. So you can expect some very nice, uh, like a bralette and brief set mm -hmm. to start mm -hmm. um, with gorgeous colors and, you know, very traditional, um, you know, made with like, a, you know, a, 
clay and, and uh, wild grapes and leaves. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is how they dye back there and stuff. So um, yeah, that's, that's what. Talk that's to us it. about the dyeing process. It has a special name. What is it called? Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, the specific process I want to focus on, because they do a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Africa. Mm -hmm. Come on. Been exactly. around forever. It's been true. Been there, done that, did it all. Um, but I specifically want to focus on something called Bogolin or Bogolin Fini. OK. Um, and that's the one where they use, like, you know, uh, clay and, uh, you know, sargum and, and different kind of leaves, you know, to make in, indigo and, and things like that. Um, it's a really beautiful process. Actually, if you watch my Kickstarter video, you'll see um, some of the process happening. So you get a sense of, of what it really is that they're doing. Mm. It's gorgeous. It's sustainable. It's it's the future. It's how we're going to protect our earth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Make mm -hmm. sure that when, when we wear things, they're not toxic. Because that's the mm -hmm. other thing. You know, a lot of the dyes that are in clothing and stuff mm -hmm. are toxic. They're, sure they're really bad organic. for us. They seep into your skin. Mm -hmm. This is bad. You know, people getting cancer left, right, and center. How are we going to uh, prevent this? African silk. African silk. Like, That's a nice like, pitch. Yeah. Like, I see why you raised so much so far. <laughs> now, I know you want to start small, but do you ever yeah. hope to maybe collaborate with some major designers or labels? Absolutely. I've already okay. been contacted by, you know, a couple of people who were interested in partnering in, in some way. Um, at this stage, you know, I really want to, you know, see what is going to de develop, you know, for the future. But I'd love to. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love working with people. And will you sell online exclusively or do you plan to sell in boutiques as well? Absolutely. Well, it's New York. Mm -hmm. And the way I love to shop is I love to pop into the little boutiques yes. that are all over, especially in Soho. Um, so that's the so, sort of that's what I'm going to do also. That's the goal, the, both the stockists in the boutiques and also online. Wow. So I'll be selling online on a uh, site I'm building right now. It's thestylediaspora.com. But all that info will be on my Kickstarter. So if you go to kickstarter.com and, you know, search for African silk, all that stuff will come up. All right. Oh, well, I'm excited. Yeah, you're, me too. <laughs> you're Nigerian, right? I am, You're yes. from Edo State? I'm from Edo State, okay. yes. Okay, yes. all right. And is textile huge in that area or no? It's it's very huge. Okay. It's, it's very huge. You know, um, I went back. I toured some of, you know, the where, where the seamstresses work and some of those quarters and stuff. Um, there is still traditional fabric making going on. It just doesn't have any reach, mm. and it's just more time consuming and more expensive than to have some stuff that's been printed from you know, mm. Asia or, or, or something like that. Well, once your line launches, you have to come back and put on a fashion show for us. I would us. love to. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I'd love to. It, it's going to be kind of sexy. I hope you guys can handle oh, it. Oh, we're we ready. can handle it. All right, we're ready. <laughs> and until then, we'll go to Kickstarter and check out African Silk and donate to your cause. Oh, thank you so much. Right, thank you so much for joining us. All right. And you're <laughs> watching Arise Entertainment 360.